Hi, my name is Ted Venema, and we're here to give you a series of vignettes on hearing, hearing loss, and hearing aids. The ear is a remarkable sense. The purpose here is to kindle a fire of interest into this remarkable sense of hearing because it's underappreciated and underestimated. Helen Keller said, blindness cuts people off from things. Deafness cuts people off from other people. She should have known she was both deaf and blind. My name again is Ted Venema. I'm registered as an audiologist and also as a hearing instrument practitioner. I was a professor of audiology at Auburn University in Alabama and later on at Western University in London, Ontario. I taught in the Hearing Instrument Specialist Program at George Brown College in Toronto for some nine years, and later on I started the Hearing Instrument Specialist Program at Conestoga College in Kitchener, Ontario. But enough about me. Hearing loss is invisible. This is what people underestimate, or this is what makes people miss hearing. People believe in what they see. Glasses, we all know about glasses, you see them on the front of people's faces. Nobody cares about glasses, they're, they're a fashion statement. People have all heard of nearsightedness, farsightedness, so the eye gets an awful lot of attention. But you can see blindness because you see the cane. Everybody lends an arm to help the person across the street. But when Mrs. McGillicuddy says, I couldn't hear that, can you please repeat? The public has a short tether of patience. We believe in what we see, and we can't see hearing loss, because hearing loss is invisible. Public knowledge is far better for vision. Again, people know all about contact lenses and bifocals, etc., but this is not true for hearing loss. How many people know the difference between conductive and sensory neural hearing loss? How about hearing aids? People think they just make sounds louder. Not true. Hearing aids need a prescription just like glasses, because people have different kinds of hearing losses at different pitches, and so hearing aids have to compensate differently at different pitches. So there's a whole world here, and we'd like to explain this and highlight this and bring it out. The purpose of these vignettes is to highlight hearing, hearing loss, and hearing aids in order to build interest into the fascinating sense of hearing. We want to describe the causes of various types of hearing loss. We want to show the hearing test results, also known as the audiograms, for these types of hearing losses. We want to explain hearing aids, what they are and what they do. Clients over 55 years of age should get routine hearing testing done. Family practitioners, general physicians should refer the, these clients for hearing tests routinely, much like mammography or colonoscopies. It would be valuable as a benchmark before the person develops further hearing loss. Early intervention is important because of the negative impacts of leaving hearing loss untreated. Hearing loss affects relationships. Hearing is a communicative sense. Left untreated, it really can deteriorate the communication between wife and husband, caregivers and other loved ones. The benefits of early treatment cannot be overestimated. People tend to wait five to seven years before getting hearing aids after they need them. We need to shorten this time. We need to check it out, as they say. Presbycusis is the most common hearing loss in the world. Hearing loss in the elderly. It affects the treble frequencies. We call it the trouble with treble. People can hear the voices, but they can't hear the high-pitched consonants of speech, like the letters F, S, TH, and so speech loses its crisp clarity. And the person says, hey, I can hear, but people are mumbling. So we hope you enjoy this series of vignettes, here to talk about hearing, hearing loss, and hearing aids. It's a fascinating world, and we hope you enjoy this series. Thanks.